I'd like to look at a rubric for the 2005 AP Statistics Exam question number three. If you're grading this in class, trade it with somebody else and be sure to put your name on the paper as the person who graded it. The Great Plains Railroad is interested in studying how fuel consumption is related to the number of cars. We took a random sample of 10 cars and got this data. Furthermore, a scatter plot revealed this graph, a residual plot revealed this graph, and computer output revealed this table here. So they asked four questions. I'd like to go over the solutions to those four questions and the way that the College Board chose to grade those four questions. So the first question is, is a linear model appropriate for modeling these data? Clearly explain your reasoning. Well, if you want to know about the appropriateness of modeling the data, you should examine the residual plot. Notice in this case that the residuals are fit or versus the fitted values, meaning the y values, not the x values. But that doesn't change the interpretation of this graph. When I look at this graph, I see no pattern. Since I see no pattern, a linear model seems reasonable. Furthermore, looking at this graph, the data appears to be linear related. So a good answer is this one. Yes, the linear model is appropriate for these data. Scatter plot shows a strong positive linear association between the number of rail cars and fuel consumption. And the residual plot shows a reasonably random scatter of points above and below zero. Now we could talk for days about exactly what's needed to get the full credit, but the way the College Board wrote the rubric is this. For each part, we need this, an essentially correct, partly correct, or incorrect. And for part A, the part we're looking at here, they decided to give an essentially correct if the model is deemed appropriate and the explanation clearly indicates that uh, there's a linear pattern in the scatter plot or there's no pattern in the residual plot. I personally prefer this second one, but they gave credit if you said the first one. They called it partly correct if you deemed the model appropriate and you talked about the scatter plot or the residual plot but failed to say that it was linear or there was no pattern or um, you talked about the relevant characteristics of the scatter plot or the residual plot but you didn't actually make the connection. So you talked, for example, about a pattern in the, in the residual plot, sorry, a lack of pattern in the residual plot but didn't actually say that that indicated linear was a good idea. And finally, you'll get an incorrect if you either say it's appropriate and don't tell why, or you say it's inappropriate, or all you do is look at these r or r squared values, I guess in this case r squared, and say because that's high, linear is appropriate. That's not a good estimation of the appropriateness of the model. That simply tells me that the model is doing a good job. Part B says, suppose the fuel consumption cost is $25 a unit. Give a point estimate, a single value, for the change in average cost of fuel per mile for each additional rail car attached to the train. Show your work. To determine this, this change of cost of fuel per mile for each additional rail car, this should make you think of the slope. The slope in this problem is 2.15. So for each additional rail car, we use 2.15 more fuel consumption. At $25 a unit, I'll simply multiply those together. 2.15 units times $25 gives me 53.75. Notice that they're using sentences and they're explaining their work as they go through. Part B is marked as essentially correct if the point estimate, and you could either use 2.15 or 2.1495. They allowed you to either use this number here or this slightly more accurate number down here. And then you multiply it by 25 to get either of those numbers. It's partially correct if uh, you either use these numbers, but you don't support it with calculations or interpretation, and it will be incorrect if you don't uh, get either of those correct. 
essentially correct for the right number here, partly correct if you just talk about the slope and don't do any of the calculation or interpretation. Part C says interpret the value of r squared in the context of this problem. I'm somewhat shocked that that's on here. Note the sarcasm. Of course, it's going to be on your test somewhere. r squared, 96.7. That tells me 96.7% of the change in fuel consumption could be anticipated through the use of the least squared regression line, the regression line of fuel consumption on rail cars. So here's the correct answer. 96.7% of the variation in consumption is explained by the linear regression model with number of rail cars as the explanatory variable. It's essentially correct if you either say either of these two statements. It's partly correct if instead of using the 96.7, you used the 96.3 from the adjusted value. And otherwise, it's incorrect. And finally, Part D says, would it be reasonable to use the fitted regression equation to predict the fuel consumption for a train on this route if it had 65 cars? Explain. Well, as I look at this graph here, I notice that 65 cars is off the graph. That's called extrapolation, and it's not a good idea. Regardless of the strength of this line right here, regardless of how close the points are to that model, using 65 as extrapolation and untrustworthy. So it says here, no, the data does not contain any information about fuel consumption for trains with more than 50 cars. Using the regression model to predict the fuel consumption for a train with 65 cars, known as extrapolation, is not reasonable. Grading for this question, essentially correct if you say no because of extrapolation. Partly correct if you say it's unreasonable but don't really give a good explanation, or you say it's reasonable even though it's a little bit of extrapolation because it's just barely outside of the domain. Note, any answer appearing without supporting work is scored and incorrect. Now at this point, I want you to count up the number of E's, I's, and P's. You get one point for each E, half a point for each P. Then, if it's two and a half points, you use a holistic approach to determine whether to make that a two or a three based on the strength of response and communication. If you need to, pause the video or rewind a little bit to look at the individual parts as you now read that question. Now I'd like to look at a few notes from this problem just so you'll kind of know where they were going and what they were hoping to see. Uh, first, the average score on the 2005 exam on this question was a 1.46. The College Board viewed this as a fairly straightforward question, and if you understood the concepts of regression and how to read computer output, you generally did well. Otherwise, not so much. Remember, our goal is to get about two points on each one, possibly getting three or four on some of them. What were common student errors or omissions? Some students argued on part A that having R squared close to 1 meant the linear model was appropriate. That's not true. Some students interpreted the question to see whether or not the linear model was the best fit, and so you tried to figure out some better model, not the question. Some students generated non-standard descriptions of the residual plot, amorphous blob, chaos, white noise, not terribly firm in their statistical understanding. And then it says some students cast a wide net hoping many on plots as well as R, R squared, P values, all sorts of stuff. Unfortunately, more is not necessarily better here since there's a greater potential for making a mistake. Whatever you write down, they're going to grade. You write a lot of stuff down, they're going to grade a lot of stuff. And so if you're kind of rambling on, they'll probably see that and find an error in what you did. Part B, many students recognize that it's involved slope, and a lot of them even gave a good interpretation. Several students recalculated the slope uh, by plugging in data here, and that really wasted time. It's listed in the computer output. No need to recalculate it. Some students didn't seem to understand the computer output. 
Lots of students didn't understand R squared or got it confused with R. And finally, some students thought uh, we could kind of go somewhere in the middle on Part D. You know, yeah, well, maybe, sort of, make a decision. Make a decision when they ask you a question. If they say which one's best, tell them which one is best. Don't say both. If they tell, ask you which way you like, tell them which way you like. If they say, would this work, make a decision on yes or no and defend that case. At this point, look again at the score. Put a, a, a number at the top of that and go ahead and put a box around it so it's real obvious what their score is on this problem. And if you traded with somebody, give it back to them so you guys can look at it and discuss it.